Hey guys, what's up? So in my last video, I kind of hit on how important the Odin project was to, uh, let's say, solidifying my interest in web development again, because it was kind of hard. It was kind of hard. I was hitting some walls, all right? But uh, let's go into a deep dive, a deep dive on the Odin project, the foundations course review. All right, so right off the bat, the Odin project throws you into the deep end, like legit. They have you setting up a uh, virtual machine, which I didn't know what that was at the time. I didn't even know that was a thing. But they have you set up a virtual machine to run Linux, right? So you install Ubuntu, did I say it right? Ubuntu, Ubuntu. You install Ubuntu on it. And then you go right into using the command line and the terminal, never done that before. And then uh, they have you set up your Git and GitHub account, right? If you guys don't know what Git is, Git's version control. It's like a memory card off on its own little island and uh, every time you work on your project and you save it to git you post it you push it to git you like store that individual save on the memory card and whenever you need to go back and access something let's say you messed your project up and you need to go to an earlier version you can just go revert back to that save you can pull it from the memory card and activate that again so really cool stuff um and like at the time it was mind-blowing now you know they had you do it so much it becomes simple but at the time i felt like i was a fucking expert guru all of a sudden right and the way they teach you that is seamless it's so streamlined it's so straightforward there was no issues highly highly recommend i mean just from that alone i was like really into it i was like okay you know maybe this might be pretty cool and then we get into the walkthrough okay the way they teach the way they display the information and give you the information it's well written and very easy to follow they give you links to a lot of source documentation they always include the source documentation they give you other perspective from blog posts from youtube videos i mean and a part of it you go over to was it free code camp i mean you get so many different perspectives on the things that you're trying to learn that even if one source just doesn't quite you know click with you you have options to go to and try to get that different perspective and that helps a lot because i hit a ton of walls, a ton of walls, like on, uh, let's just call it single source documentation, you know, like books that don't reference anything else. It's just that perspective. All of my walls so far have been because, you know, I didn't know how to expand and go around. But learning that, it's just great. It's just great. They teach you right off the bat to like, look at all the options. Don't settle or get stuck on one thing. Beautiful. Also, they feed you a few small concepts at a time and then have you build a project using those same concepts, like encompass it. They don't walk you through the project. It's not a build along. It's not like, you know, you're watching a video and you're like, okay, let's do this. Or you're reading along and let's do this. No, they tell you what they want you to do and they give you a set of guidelines and you build according to those guidelines. I love that. Like it allows you to hit walls. It allows you to get lost. It allows you to be put in a situation where you're vulnerable and you have to find the answer. And like, that's where you learn. It makes you learn from building, which is, I love it. That's, it's so satisfying when you figure something out and you retain it and you keep it up here and you're equipped. You're equipped. You're set. You're good. All right. But it gets you into the habit of like looking for things and getting around, getting stuck. And sure, the projects are kind of generic and cliche and everybody has those in their portfolio. It's really cool to be able to look back and see your progress, like from the first project to the last project in that portfolio, even if it is kind of generic. And we'll come back to that later. I got I got something to bring up about that at the end, but we'll save that for later. But all in all, the projects are fun and rewarding and pretty cool. Uh, so now let's get into like the kind of the flow of the course, right? We can pull this up here. So it starts pretty simply. So this is kind of like the overview of the Odin project here. It starts with the introduction. They cover how the course will work. You can kind of read introduction to web dev, motivation to mindset. This is kind of like really quick to read. Get you to understand that you're gonna get stuck. You're gonna to have to grit it out and like, it's gonna be hard. Stick with it. That's pretty much what that's saying. You go right to the installations. Like I was saying earlier, getting the Git, getting your text editor, big thing, big thing. While we're here, text editor. I started coding in a notepad, which is absolutely garbage, right? Get a text editor. Get Visual Studio Code. It's what I use. It's free. It's amazing. You can get this fancy uh, live server. I won't call it an add-on, but I know it's not called an add-on. You can get this little live server add-on. We'll call it an add-on. Why not? <laughs> For your uh, VCS code that makes it so you can like go live and get live updates every time you save. So you don't have to click refresh over and over again. You can just do something. Quick Control S, save it. Boom. You have it on the other open on the other monitor. You see the change instantly. You just go from there. Highly recommend VCS code, highly recommend live server. 
get that, get that. And the Elton Project tells you that. They, they start you off on the right foot. That's how you want to get started. Not, not Notepad. That's not the move. But from there, we go right into the Git basics. They introduce you to Git, tell you what Git was or is, how to use it, what GitHub is, the difference between Git and GitHub. Very important stuff to know, man. Very important stuff to know. It throws you into the front end. And um, here, the front end was pretty interesting, right? They send you to free code camp for the bulk of it. Like they give their own little things. Like here, I'll we'll, we'll go into one. They kind of go bullet by bullet, kind of show you what's up, kind of walk you through everything, give you very simple assignments. But at the end of the day, I think the majority of their um, front end, the first little tutorial they give you is done in free code camp. And it's like free code camps first course so I mean it was good it was still pretty cool you still get a really solid foundation and really good practice using everything especially over on free code camp that's another great site but um I mean this combines both of them it's fantastic you get a really good feel for everything you build you get to do a lot of um active projects we'll call them we're actually building things and modifying things in HTML and CSS really cool you get experience with grid and flexbox which are awesome which really took some time to wrap my head around but it was dope and then it all caps off in this Google home page here so let's go ahead and get the Google homepage open and show you guys what it looks like. So when I built mine, it was very simple. I didn't know what I was doing. I was very uncomfortable with the whole process. As you guys can see, it's not the, the most exciting thing, but I was getting into it, man. I made, you know, little buttons up here, gave it some shadow down here on the little box, the box down here. I made that div, threw the words in it, spaced everything out. And now I was still wrapping my head around grid and flex box that are in this project. So, you know, I flexed it. Look at that. Ooh, you guys can't see. Look at that. Ooh. Ooh. Now, don't judge me. I know when I collapse it, the, the Google stops right there. I gotta fix the left margin, but I didn't know how to do that at the time. So I thought it was super dope though. Look at that, oof, look at that. Oof, flex boxing. Responsiveness, really cool though. I had a lot of fun with that project. Look at that, look at that, look at that. Oof, oof, box shadow. Oh my, inversion, inverting the colors. Oh yeah, had a lot of fun with that project. Super simple, super cool, nice little confidence booster. Gets you going the right direction, right? And then from there, we keep going, we keep trucking along, we get to the JavaScript basics. So I'm not gonna go you know, too in-depth with what every little node is, but you're gonna learn functions, obviously variables, uh, if, if conditionals, uh, for loops, while loops, I think do while loops are even in there. Uh, all the basics, like when you think of the basics of JavaScript, it's in there. Everything you need to know, like get a, a web page functioning at a basic level is in there. Uh, arrays are in there. It goes more in depth in the objects afterwards. We'll get to that at the end, but that's kind of where it stops is at objects. But you get a really good grasp of everything before then. It breaks it down. It explains how things work. I mean, there's, it's just so much to take in. Very good. Highly recommend. And this thing caps off and there's three different projects in here. The first one is rock, paper, scissors. So we'll get that open. So the rock, paper, scissors game is really cool. I mean, it's really simple. It gets using what was it, math, random and math floor to generate an AI, at least that's how I did it. I don't know how you're supposed to do it, but I use math random the math floor between the numbers of zero and two for the AI, you know, rock, paper, scissors is really simple. You only have three options, so one, two, and three. And you kind of got to make them go in a circle on which beats what. And then once you figure that out, you kind of just go from there. So it's a lot of conditionals. Uh, I think mine's built totally on conditionals. If you guys want to see the code, maybe I'll go in another video and show the code for all these projects, but this, I'm just showing you guys the finished product right now. So this was my rock, paper, scissors game. Very simple, <laughs> very simple. It plays uh, five rounds, I think. Apparently I'm just stomping the, I'm just stomping. I'm just, oh, I'm getting stomped now. Oh, I got me, I lost. So very simple, um, gets you used to using some JavaScript, you know, some DOM, oh, I forgot DOM. DOM's a big thing they cover. DOM manipulation is a huge thing they cover, obviously. I don't know how to look that out. But yeah, it gets you working with that, it's pretty cool stuff. Very simple game. Yeah, nothing too complicated. I like it though. I, I felt like hot shit after I built this. I felt like hot shit. But super cool project, really enjoyed it. Really had fun doing it. From there, we go into the next project, which was the, I mean, they go over some fundamentals like clean code, more fundamentals. I and mean, they go into DOM manipulation real hard here for this next project, the etch sketch All right, so this is the etch sketch project. This one messed me up for a little bit, I'm not gonna lie. I could not wrap my head around <laughs> making the grid appear in the middle. Like that took me some time because you have to be able to reset it to any size, and that took me some um, some time to figure out, man. But, but really cool project. 
Just gets you used to working on uh, more DOM manipulation. Very simple stuff. Just on mouse over effects for the div, changing the colors, making it a random color. A lot of fun. Really cool project. Makes you feel like you, you know what you're doing, even if you don't know what you're doing, right? Look at that. Oof. Look at that mouse over effect. Oof. 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 Oh, we reset. What size? 16. Boom. We're going to shrink it. We can go even smaller. 8 by 8. Boom. We out here. We out here. All right. And then after the etch and sketch, they throw a little more JavaScript at you, and then it hits you with like the final project of the whole course, the calculator, right? So the calculator was hard. It is a hard project, man. It messed me up pretty bad. And here it is. The calculator. The calculator. The fucking, the crown achievement of my coding so far right here. I think my library is better, but that's in the next course. So this is my calculator. Uh, you know, I got it to work. I don't know if this is like the way you're supposed to get a calculator to work, but it's the way I got a calculator to work. <laughs> you know what I mean? I don't know if it's, uh, I, I, I don't know a lot of things about this calculator. Would I use it over like a real calculator? Maybe. Maybe if I'm feeling myself. But it was super cool to build. It was super challenging. I learned a lot building this stupid calculator. So much building this calculator. Like, the hardest thing for me to wrap my head around was how to store the variables, right? Like, obviously, you need to store the variables for a calculator to do math, but how do you store A and B? That's where I think my way is different. Once again, like, maybe if, if I make another video, if you guys want me to make a video going through the code for all the projects I did in the Odin project, I can go through and show you guys how I stored the variable, but really cool project. Had a lot of fun. We had to, like, add a backspace to it. Obviously, make it able to clear, make sure everything can function. Now, you didn't have to make it your calculator was only supposed to be able to do like one function at a time, not chain functions together like this, but I didn't read that. So <laughs> I read it when it was too late. So I spent some extra time in there grinding, trying to figure out how to make it able to do continuous functions. Now, we won't get into PEMDAS or order of operations. I did not put an order of operations into this calculator. So I just wanted to do one thing and kind of chain that answer into other things. That was by choice. Could I have figured out how to do a uh, order of operations calculator? Maybe, but it wasn't required, so I didn't do it. I could have went above and beyond. But yeah, that's pretty much the last project in the Odin project. And then um, from there, it kind of like gives you an introduction to the back end, shows you kind of like what you're going to do. There's two options they give you. They give you Ruby on Rails to continue with the back end, or they give you Node.js to continue with the back end. So they kind of like give you a synapses of both. Ruby's easier, more eloquent, beginner friendly language. Node is still JavaScript. It's still the language you've been learning this whole time. I did some research on my own. They gave you some articles, kind of trying to guide you in the right direction. I looked around, what's hiring, what's in demand. Ruby seems to be on a downward trend. I know there's probably like a million people saying, no, Ruby's the shit, like don't do it. But Ruby's on a downward trend, Node's on an upward trend. I looked around at jobs. There's a lot of Ruby jobs, there's a lot of JavaScript developer jobs and Node was a part of that. Um, and I think I just want to kind of go that whole direction of JavaScript for now, just keep everything consistent because I'm going to be jumping into uh, React and Node next is kind of the direction that I'm going. So I just want to keep it all consistent with the same language. That's the reason I made the choice. So then I moved into the next part of the course and now we're working with backend. And um, yeah, with that, I actually got some experience with Firebase, which is really cool. I didn't expect that at all. Firebase was so badass. But that's for another video. So that's where I am now. We wrapped up the project there. We wrapped up the class. Then after that, it's it. I mean, it's not really a class, more of a tutorial, but that's it. It gives you like the introduction to the back end and says, choose your path and then go to the next course. And there we are doing the next course. So if I had to say anything about the Odin project, the foundations course, the very first one you do is if you're just getting started, if you don't know where to start, if you've been going for a little bit and you're feeling lost, just do it, dude. Start the Odin project. Save yourself some time. Save yourself a headache and get started, all right? Projects are fun. You learn a lot. You build a lot. And you end up with a pretty fucking cool portfolio. Now, some people might argue, is your portfolio useful? I mean, you have all the generic apps in there. I mean, even when you go into the next section, like you're building weather apps, um, to-do list, uh, the library was one of them, a tic-tac-toe game. I've watched a lot of videos on YouTube and everybody says those are like super basic, super generic, don't put them in there. Well, I'm putting them in there. You know why? So I'll have something to reference, <laughs> right? I mean, it's padding the portfolio out, it's showing that I've been building stuff. Not only that, 
but I'll be able to look back myself and like see the progress that I made and hopefully other people will look and see the progress too or maybe they won't but I think as far as building a portfolio goes the more that's in there the more motivated you are to keep growing it you know what I mean it's it's hard when something's empty it's like starting a fresh set of coke and the page is empty it's like well what do I what, what do I do where do I start you know but once you've been in the habit of uploading things to uploading your git and uploading your git to github and like building things out it's not it's just second nature your portfolio is going to build itself right so i mean that's just how i feel about that sure they're generic but so what everything you do is not going to be generic right eventually you're going to have a grasp of it, a grasp of it enough on your own to like do your own thing and build your own projects i got a project plan for when i get a better grasp of everything i could probably start doing it now but i want to finish this course first and really solidify the basics before i move on and start hitting more walls you know what i mean but yeah, it's time for me to go finish the rest of the project up and wrap it up so I can get this back end down. Until next time, y'all. Later.